Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Esther Industries Limited Q2 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star 10 0 on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Gavin Disa from CDR India. Thank you. And over to you, Mr. Disa. Thank you. Good day, everyone, and a warm welcome to Esther Industries Q2 and H1 FY24 Analyst and Investor Conference Call. We have with us today Mr. Arvind Singhania, the Chairman and CEO, Mr. Pradeep Kumar Istagi, the Executive Director of Corporate Affairs, and Mr. Girish Mahal, Business Head. We will begin this call with opening remarks from the management, following which we will have the floor open for an interactive Q&A session. Before we begin, I would like to point out that some statements made in today's discussions may be forward-looking in nature and in order to this effect was shared with you in the invite area. We trust you have had a chance to go through the financial performance. I would now like to hand over to Ms. Arvind Singhania to make his opening remarks. Over to you, Arvind. Thank you, Kevin. And thanks to everyone for joining us today. I have alongside with me Mr. Pradeep Nasrani, Executive Director, and Mr. Girish Behel, Business Head, Film SBU. I will briefly talk about the key business highlights, both which Pradeep will walk you through our financial performance. The current business uh, landscape continues to pose challenges for both the BOPEC films and specialty polymer sectors. On a standalone basis, though quarterly performance reflects improvement on a sequential basis at a broad level, it does mirror the pressure being faced by both these, uh, both these industries. We have, seen our industry peer, we have seen our industry peers in the BOPEC film business report a subdued performance in the same period as well. Starting with the BOPEC film sector, we've been emphasizing the significant increase in supply due to the introduction of new capacities. This surge in supply has negatively impacted pricing, margins, and overall profitability. On the other hand, the specialty polymers division Safeguarded by intellectual property rights is not exposed to direct competitive risk, but it is nonetheless exposed to the challenges of a slowdown and the uncertainties grappling the U.S. economy, which is its private, uh, primary market. Let me now move on to our quarterly performance. To start with the he headline numbers, on a standalone basis, our revenue for the quarter stood at Rs. 244 crores, with a bid of Rs. 3 crores and a loss for the quarter at Rs. 13 crores. The underwhelming performance, as previously highlighted, mirrors the underground hurdles our businesses are currently facing. The film business, as we have previously mentioned, is experiencing acute demand supply imbalance due to commissioning of new capacities. This, combined with the subdued demand in overseas markets, has negatively affected the profit margins. The performance of the specialty polymers business has also been affected by continuing recessionary pressure in the U.S., which is key and major market for this business. Moving on to individual businesses now, starting with specialty polymer. While we did business, uh, witness some improvement in both revenues and volumes during the quarter compared to Q1, the on-ground situation though remains challenging owing to the uncertainties and inflationary worries cracking the U.S. economy. In terms of product uptake, we have seen 14% growth in volumes on a sequential basis, although on year or on year basis it has degrown. The present volume trajectory is below the historical averages and the true potential of the business. During Q2 as well, despite reporting higher volume, we have seen a profitability and margins trend lower to, owing to lower contribution from the marquee high margin products. MD03 volume for the quarter stood at 179 metric tons as against 422 metric tons in Q2 FY23 and 247 metric tons in Q1 FY24. As far as innovative PVP is concerned, Q2 business volumes of 185 metric tons as against 605 metric tons in Q2 FY23 and 79 metric tons in Q1 FY24. We have been reiterating that the products and the businesses on its own is not subject to competitive threats given that most of our products are IT protected. The growth momentum though is subject to the overall business sentiment and health of the US economy. We are hopeful that the demand and uh, subsequently the volume and profitability of the business will revise maybe after a couple of quarters as the U.S. economy starts to recover. It is important to mention here that basis revenues of 150, 130 crores of presently polymer SDU generated during half one of FY23 had achieved annual run rate of about Rs. 260 crores. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. <laughs> Our first question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor and Co. Please go ahead. Yeah, Namaste, Tenganya Ji. Namaste, Rastogi. And, and I hope we, you are doing good now, Rastogi. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Sir, if, if we firstly uh, thank you for the opening remark that was very vivid and covered a lot of the aspects about the business part. But sir, if we take into account the cycle in which we are currently, we, we must have, we have faced this kind of excess capacity earlier also. Yeah. So if you could guide, if you could guide us, uh, where are we in midst of the glut and then again the demand rising and again we returning to our normal margin situation. So. Are we midway or, are, or is the worst still there in terms of the pricing part and the lower utilization levels, which are, which will definitely happen as they are, all players, uh, players are bleeding and also new capacities. I think so uh, one, one new line is also expected go, going ahead. So if you could give some, some color on what are the extra other capacity addition we are seeing in the, uh, in the, in the near future, um, your uh, outlook, where are we in terms of that? Yeah. In terms of the cycle, we are at the bottom. We can't go any further. I mean, at least at least substantially further. We are, uh, we are uh, I would say, uh, more than midway uh, through the cycle. Uh, we have only one more line left to be commissioned, which will be commissioned by the end of this month or early next month. And I think we should start seeing some improvement uh, in the next uh, couple of quarters, definitely. We also know one very important thing that as per the new plastic waste management rules, which have been declared, they, are, they demand a 10% recycle content in all packaging materials. So this is possible and this is, this is becoming effective from 1st of April 2025. Now this is possible only in polyester film. It is not possible in DOPP. So actually we are going to see a much higher growth in demand starting towards end of next calendar to fulfill this requirement of the place plastic waste management rules. For the interim demand is expected to grow substantially more than any other competitive product. So actually we are now, I think in the next couple of quarters, we should start seeing some improvement in terms of margin. And I think by 2025, we will be, uh, we will be uh, in a reasonably good shape. I hope this answers your question, Sakeji. Yes, yes, sir. And says, uh, for the specialty polymer, I think so. Things are looking um, in a even <laughs> even line in if we take quarter and quarter numbers. So therein also said, uh, uh, how how when can we go back to our previous margin state and the outlook which we had earlier in terms of the offset? This is just bad luck, uh, Sakheji. Please please understand that if you take our Q1 numbers uh, of uh, FY23. We reached an annual run rate of 260 crores of turnover with an EBITDA margin, with an EBITDA margin of 85 90 crores. Mm. Now, this would have actually grown from there had this uh, global recession has not occurred. Interest rates have gone up uh, in America from 0 to 5 percent. Mm. And you know, this is, this is hurting the business and economy tremendously. And, and uh, uh, as soon as this recovery starts, we are expecting we are expecting uh, this recovery to start by second uh, quarter calendar 2024. And I am very hopeful that towards the end of next year, we should be coming back to uh, the numbers of uh, last year. Yes. This is our new expectation. In fact, Rastogiji, if you could give me some color on the how the raw material uh, sizes have played up uh, and uh, what the current trend there and also on the net debt numbers. And I think, so, sir, now with uh, uh, with, with these uh, with, with these utilization levels, also, also on the utilization levels, if you could give separately the utilization levels for our uh, new facility and the existing one, the previous one. I think we answer all these questions. Raw material is more or less stable. The the CPM prices are uh, about 77 rupees a kg, and the MEG is uh, in the range of 46 rupees a kg. 
uh, which gives us the chip rate, uh, Romical cost for chip at about 81 to 82 rupees a kg. More or less, the raw materials have been stable since last three, two to three months, and we don't foresee any major variation in the raw material cost going forward. Uh, coming to the debt portion, uh, so we have a term debt of about 400 crores outstanding in excess fintech and a working capital outstanding of about 50 crores. So that's 450 crores in extra fintech, and we have close to 300 crores debt. Uh, 200 is the uh, the term debt and 110 crore is the working capital. That's the debt, interest bearing debt in uh, extra industry. So, all put together, both the companies, the consolidated debt is 750 crore. But we also have 140 crore uh, lying in the liquid financial instrument uh, security. So, net debt is about uh, 610 crore. Uh, coming to the capacity utilization. The capacity utilization in extra film tech is about 55 to 60 percent, whereas in extra industries it is 75 percent plus. Uh, as far as film is concerned, especially polymer, uh, because of the recession in US, the utilization levels are very low, uh, less than 10 percent currently. So uh, I hope this answers all the three questions that you had raised. Yes, yes sir. And the cost of funds, sir, currently? What the fund uh, in extra industry rate is about 10% now because there has been continuous increase in the repo rate and which is also need, uh, forcing banks to increase their rate of interest. Uh, in extra fintech, it is about 8%, 7.5 to 8%. Okay. It is taking into account the deterioration in the finance operational and therefore and the financial performance. Can we money? How are we going to ride through this uh, since 600 crore rupees? Uh, debt on a consolidated basis also is a, is a large number and taking into account the current uh, uh, business environment. What steps are you taking to tide over this and sir, can we also, how are the rating agencies sir, taking into consideration the current environment? So we had a meeting with the rating agency uh, in the recent past and looking at the comfortable liquidity position we are not taking any negative view on the, uh, on the company per se. Uh, but uh, in three months to six months time, they would be looking at the industry in totality and then they may come out with some sort of correction if required. But uh, this is our discussion with the rating agencies. As of now, there is no uh, risk to the uh, down of uh, the rating that we have obtained. We are A minus as of now from Christine. And we have enough liquidity to, you know, as I was to write through this uh, this uh, counter. And so we, we are not really uh, we are not really worried, and uh, uh, we are always there to stand by uh, with the company. Uh, we have performed extremely well in the last three four years, handed out very 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 handsome dividends to the shareholders. The share price also went up. Unfortunately, because of key excess capacity and the and the uh, global uh, recessionary conditions, this has happened. But this is a very short-term phenomena, and we are very, very sure that we'll come out of it very soon and stronger. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Saket Kapoor. May we request you to rejoin the question queue for follow-up questions, please? Thank you. <coughs> Our next question is from the line of Ajinkya Jada from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I'm what is it? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, my first question is, uh, so what are the sectors one must look uh, at to see, uh, like there are signs of potential growth for the revival of uh, the film business? Sorry, you can hear, we can't hear you, you're not very clear. Can you please speak louder? Or, hello? Yes. Handset, rather than so, if you could phone. use your handset, please. You don't use speakerphone. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I was saying, what are the sectors? One must look at to see uh, the signs of potential growth uh, revival for films business. What sector should we look at? I mean, polyester film actually addresses the uh, flexible packaging business, while the specialty mm -hmm. polymer addresses many sectors across the board, including uh, including consumer electronics, uh, uh, carpets, textiles, industrial, uh, rigid packaging, flexible packaging. So we are uh, we are actually addressing a, a, a host of applications in specialty polymer, while polyester film addresses uh, largely flexible packaging. And the flexible oh, packaging would uh, be mainly consumer FMCG sector. 
ओके ओके मे सेकंड क्वेश्चन इज दीज टू प्रोडक्ट इनोवेटिव पीबीटी एंड एम बी जीरो थ्री मास्टर बैच हाउ मच दे कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू द यू कैन से स्पेशलिटी पॉलिमर्स बिजनेस इनोवेटिव पीबीटी एंड एम बी जीरो थ्री प्रोडक्ट सॉरी अगेन यू आर नॉट वेरी ऑडिबल योर वॉइस इज वेरी अनक्लियर कैन यू प्लीज रिपीट योर क्वेश्चन सो मे वी रिक्वेस्ट यू टू यूज योर हैंड सेट प्लीज या Yes, sir. Please uh, go ahead and use your handset. So your audio is not very clear, sir. It's muffled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my my question is, uh, MB zero three and innovative PBT. These two products, uh, how much they contribute to the specialty polymer business? Okay, they contribute very largely to the specialty polymer business, about seventy to eighty percent. And right now, because of the like I explained, because of the recession in the US. uh and global recession actually the volume has fallen uh, quite substantially and we are hoping that this will start reviving uh, by the middle of next year by the middle of next calendar okay okay that's thank you the last question from my end, like uh, how is the pipeline uh, in the special specialty polymers business for the new product are there any plans to launch the pipeline is quite strong and actually we are working on a couple of very interesting products right now and they are very hopeful uh, that they will also start giving dividends it may take some time because we just started introducing it to the market so hopefully i uh, my sometime during next year we should hear some uh, positive uh, if it gets start getting positive effects of it also okay okay yeah, yeah that's it from my end. thanks for asking the question yeah thank you thank you our next question is from the line of jatin damania from swan investment managers please go ahead <laughs> So I just wanted to understand more from an industry perspective. Now, I mean, you mentioned in the opening remarks that there was an oversupply, and probably we are at the mid-level of cycles, and there's only one more line coming up in the coming months. But if you look over on the industry, there are number of players who are increasing the capacity. So if you look in, I mean, almost 58% capacity we have seen increase over December 21 in Bopet, and similarly 23% in BOCC. And almost two third of the capacity is another lined up in March 26. So over a longer period of time, how can one look at the BOPED and BOPP industries and the steps going ahead? See, it's all a question of demand and supply. Right now, the supply is much more than demand. That is the reason why the margins are under compression. So, but the but the good the good news is that the demand growth is extremely uh, extremely positive. And it is growing at about 10 to 12 percent domestically and about 6 percent globally. So this will lead to uh, 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 lead to uh, closing the gap between demand and supply very soon. So let's say right now if we are at about uh, 65, 67 percent capacity utilization, the moment we start touching anything between 75 to 80 percent, we start seeing improvement in margin. So uh, it's not going to be too far away. the so we start seeing improvement like i said a couple of quarters more we we'll start seeing improvement and uh, uh, this is what we are strongly see so which segment is driving that growth and probably you are still being so confident that in couple of quarters will reach to a 75% so can you help us the segment which is driving which will drive the overall growth all segments across the board fmcg we, we uh, you know this goes for flexible packaging Of, uh, of dozens of uh, FMCG products, including rice, sugar, salt, uh, tea, coffee, uh, uh, you know, uh, namkeen. Biggest is, biggest sector is namkeen. Your bujias and your uh, all your all your big brand names, snack foods, uh, potato chips. Everything is packaged in in in, in polyester and uh, POPG. So you know, we we and these these sectors are growing phenomenally. I mean, these numbers are available for you to see uh, or in our public platform. So, the, when when these sectors will grow so phenomenally, the growth of the uh, packaging for the uh, is is bound to grow in a similar manner. Right. So, I mean, in your opening remarks or probably in the previous comments, you also indicated about the new plastic policy that will probably will come into effect from first April of 25. So on a ballpark number, do we have any ideas what will be the incremental demand that we will probably can generate from this policy? Well, if, if you know, the, uh, the policy says that uh, uh, all flexible packaging must 
contain 10% recycled content. And uh, and this is uh, effective on 1st of April 2025. Now, polyester film is the only product which can give this, uh, which can meet this requirement. Even BOTC cannot meet this requirement of 10% recycled content. So I believe, or we believe, that there will be a big switch over from uh, BOPP towards polyester once this becomes effective. It's very difficult to give numbers, but uh, I, I would imagine there will be a substantial boost to uh, the consumption of polyester film. Okay. And so coming to your quarterly numbers, because if you, if I'm not wrong, last quarter we had some impact of the shutdown at our facility in Telangana. So if you can help us the status, what was the status of the entire facility in Q2 because that was the new capacity which came on stream and at what level we utilized it? Sorry, can you repeat your question? Your, your voice is very muffled. We can't understand what you're saying. No, sir, because see, I just wanted to understand the volume side because last quarter we indicated that there was some impact of the shutdown in the, the Telangana. So, I just wanted to understand the status in the Q2 and at what level of utilization will be operated at the Telangana facility. About 65%. The Telangana has about 65% capacity utilization. Okay, 65%. Yeah. And, so, and the last question, which is on the specialty polymer. <clears throat> so because uh, we have seen the near-term hydrogen because we are seeing a decline in the demand. So by any chance, are we seeing any green shoot or probably two or three quarters down the line or probably are we hearing anything from the US and customers that probably we are seeing a revival in demand because that's the key product and which will drive the overall value proportion in our entire market entire basket and drive the margin. So if I one want to understand the uh, growth in the security polymers and the margins, probably for FI 2526, so how shall one we look at it? I think I think by FI, uh, FI uh, uh, if you talk about FI 26, uh, or let's say the year of 2526, I think it will be fully back to normal by then. So it is safe to assume that we will be around 25 30% for the facility polymers at that point of time? So, like I said, I expect the revival of facility polymers to start sometime middle of next calendar, so around June, July, or May, June. And okay. by the end of next calendar, that means by end by December 24 or let's say early 25, we expect mm -hmm. most of the demand to come back in facility polymers. So 25, 26 should be a very good year for specialty policy. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. That's all from my side and best wishes for the first decisions to the entire team. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor & Co. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you for this opportunity again. So I was coming to the point of uh, the new uh, the new capacity coming up in the near future. If you could just provide uh, outline. Uh, Sorry, can you repeat your question? Can you repeat your question again? Sorry, yes, sir. Then we request you to use your handset, please. Now you can hear me, sir? Yes, yes. Sir, yes. Please, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Sir, I was looking uh, for an answer for the new capacity that will be commercialized in the near future, domestically also and internationally also. The, the size. Uh, I think it, as far as the domestic is concerned, there's only one line coming up this year and, and one is coming towards uh, end of next year. That's all. And then there are nothing, there is nothing else dated till 26 or 27. Okay. And internationally, sir? Internationally, there is no capacity that we know of other than China, where some, uh, where some uh, substantial uh, expansions are taking, uh, are taking place. But, you know, to get Absolutely accurate information on China is very, very difficult. I mean, it's just, and they don't export anything, uh, so, you know, it's not really a threat to us. Uh, taking into consideration the current domestic demand, uh, are films being imported in the country or? Uh, uh, no, there are no imports. There is no import threat as of now. There is no import threat as of now. So, so, uh, uh, what for what factors will change uh, our fortunes money going ahead? How will these uh, capacities get uh, absorbed, and how is uh, 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 the path going to be? Your, what what's your experience? Sir? Uh, I very simple. Uh, has explained before. Demand yeah. growth is about 11-12 percent in India and 6 percent globally. 
And right. and once the, the plastic waste management rules become effective first of April 25, the mm-hmm. demand for polyester film will, will, will shoot even more. There will be con- there is likely to be conversion from BOBP to polyester film because BOBP cannot offer products with 10% uh, recycled content. Only polyester can. So we expect uh, demand uh, to to shoot substantially in the polyester film sector uh, starting April 25. Okay. Is that, uh, how has been our performance in the value added segment? I think so for Esther Limited, we had a good proportionate and we also guided for. Uh, That's doing quite well. That's doing quite well. And in fact, we are working on one very interesting product which could actually become a game changer for the whole festival packaging industry. We will we'll come to know about it very soon. Okay, that is again in the value added metallurgical segment only. It is a value added product, yes. Okay, and, and and what are the spreads, sir, currently, I forgot to ask, currently per kg spread for us? Uh, the domestic market will be around uh, 18, 19, 16, 17 to 19 rupees. Okay, and in optimum conditions, sir, uh, what are the reasonable margins that we have been entering over a period of time consistently for uh, for giving away the variation? Margins, uh, we have seen crazy margins of up to 75 rupees. Ha, that's, yeah. Of course, it's not going to come back for a while, but uh, I would imagine reasonable margins could be in the region of about 40, 45 rupees. I think that we should uh, not to defend the future. Thank, thank you, sir, for all these detailed answers. I'll join the queue again for any follow-up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question of our question and answer session. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you all for attending uh, the uh, earnings call today, and I look forward to seeing you all for the next earnings call for the uh, quarter three. Thank you very much, and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Esther Industries, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.